So here we're told that steam enters a counterflow heat exchanger at 0.07 megapascals with a specific enthalpy of 24.31 kilojoules per kilogram and it exits at the same pressure as a saturated liquid. So we can draw our heat exchanger. And we know that one of these vents, we'll say the top, has steam. And it's going to have state 1 and state 2. And at 1, we have, so steam, we'll have P1 equals 0 0.07 megapascals, which is equal to P2, which is also 0 0.07. 0 0.07 megapascals and we're also told that the specific enthalpy h1 is 2431.6 kilojoules per kilogram now we're told that it exits at a saturated liquid so x2 is equal to zero and finally we're told that the mass flow rate m dot is 1.5 kilograms per minute which is also 0 0.025 kilograms per second. Now, in the other vent, we're told that we have air, so counterflow goes in the opposite direction, so air, and we'll have the inlet as 3 and the outlet as 4. We're told that the inlet temperature for this air is T3 equals 30 degrees Celsius, and it exits at T4, which is equal to 60 degrees Celsius. And we're told that the mass flow rate is equal to 100 kilograms per minute, which is also 1.67 kilograms per second. Finally, we're told the specific heat of air, in this case, Cp, is 1.005 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. So we're asked to find a couple of things here, first being the quality of the steam at, at its inlet, so x1, as well as the heat transfer of the entire control volume, so cv, between the heat exchanger and its surroundings, qcv, and that's going to be in kilowatts. So first we'll calculate the quality at the inlet for steam, so we have x1 is equal to h1 minus hf divided by hg minus hf. So this is just the formula you use for basically any quality. You just have to use one of these intensive properties such as enthalpy or specific energy. So we're given enthalpy, so we're gonna use enthalpy. So we can substitute that x1 is equal to h1, which is equal to 2431.6. And now we have to find the saturated liquid and saturated vapor properties. So we know that we're going to be looking for 0.07 megapascals, which, by the way, is 0.7 bar, and 2431.6 kilojoules per kilogram for a specific enthalpy. So let's turn over into table A3, which is a saturated water table, and we'll go to 0.7 bar, because that's the pressure we have, and we were given 2431.6 kilojoules per kilogram, which is, in fact, between the saturated liquid and saturated vapor specific enthalpy, meaning that we're definitely in the two-phase mixture table. So therefore, we can use HF is 376.7 and HG is 2660. So we can fill out the rest of this formula as 376.7 on the top and 2660 minus 376.7 on the bottom. And this all equates to the quality being 0 0.9. And that actually makes sense because steam should be closer to being a saturated vapor. And also we're much closer to the saturated vapor uh, content rather than the saturated liquid content. Next, to find the heat transfer, we can apply the energy balance over a control volume. So QCV minus WCV plus the uh, sum of the inlets minus the sum of the outlets. It's a terrible sigma. So all this is is heat transfer minus work plus sum of mass flow rate times enthalpy at inlets minus sum of mass flow rate times enthalpy at outlets is equal to zero. 
Now, since we don't have a turbine or a compressor receiving work here, we can say that the work for this control volume is equal to zero. So we're left with the heat transfer plus the inlets. So we have M.1 and M.3. So M.1 H1 plus M.3 H3. And that's just simply from up here. We have an inlet here and an inlet here. And then the outlets or the exits are two and four. So from that, we're gonna subtract M.2 H2 minus M.4 H4. And that is all equal to zero. Now we're told that we have the enthalpy at one, but we don't have the enthalpy at two, three, and four. But we can calculate that given the information that we know. So we know that the enthalpy at two, for example, will be 0.7 bar and a quality of zero. So if we go back to our table here, we know that the enthalpy at two will just be the saturated vapor. So it'll be 376.7, and that's gonna be H2. Now we can start filling out our equation here. And before I do, I just wanna say that it looks like it didn't pick up the zero here. So 0 0.025 is the mass flow rate, M.1 or M.2. So QCV plus M.1 is 0 0.025. And then H1 was given as 2431.6 plus M.3 we know is given as 1.67. And now we need to find H3. So at three, we're told that we have 30 degrees Celsius, or in other words, 303 Kelvin. So if we turn to table A22, which is the ideal gas properties of air, we see that there isn't actually a 303 Kelvin over here, but we do have 300 and 305 and the corresponding enthalpies. And if you interpolate, you'll have that H3 is just about 303.21, and that's kilojoules per kilogram. So we can multiply 1.67 by 303.21. And then from that, we're gonna subtract. So I'm gonna start a new line here. So subtract M.2, which again is 0 0.025. And that's gonna be times H2, which we already calculated as 376.7 from the properties table of the saturated liquid. Finally, we can subtract M.4, which is 1.67 times H4. And we don't have H4, but we do have T4, which is 60 degrees Celsius or 333 Kelvin. So we can go back to table A22 and we can interpolate between 330 and 340. And we can see that H4 is just about 333.36 kilojoules per kilogram. So now we can add that into our formula, so 333.36. And now once you solve all this out, which is all equal to zero, so now you can solve all this out and you'll have that QCV is equal to negative 1.12 kilowatts. And because that's negative, we know that this heat is being transferred out of the system 